Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic inexorable maths video. In this video we're doing something quite interesting. We are finding the derivative of the modulus function of x or the absolute function of x or the absolute value of x or however you want to say it. So we use the notation uh, of an x within two like straight lines as you can see uh, right there. And that basically means again if you're not familiar with this notation the idea of like if you were to graph, uh, oh, I'll use I'll use black here. If you were to graph the line um, y equals the modulus function of x, this simply says what this does to uh, to the y value is it says whatever x is, make it the positive version of that number. So for example, if we put actual numbers in, uh, the modulus function of the number five, well, five is a positive number. So it doesn't change the value, it stays as five. But the modulus function of the number minus five becomes positive and it turns into a five. Likewise, the modulus function of minus one is equal to positive one and so on. So basically, if it's a positive number within those two straight lines, it becomes, um, it, if it's a positive number, it stays positive. If it's a negative number, it goes positive. Everything that comes out of a modulus function must always be positive or zero. So the modulus function of zero is simply zero, but it cannot be negative. So um, basically, if you draw this on a graph, just to be really clear, the um, what the graph looks like if this is an X and Y situation um, is it looks basically kind of like, again, you know, with a ruler preferably, but it kind of looks like this, okay? This is the graph of Y equals mod X. The reason is because normally if you were to do the line y equals x, it would be this guy here, but it would go downwards like that. But because the graph is negative there, the modulus function makes it positive and it brings it back up. That's why it kind of comes up on the left uh, when you might think it should go down. So that's basically a little introduction to the modulus function, what it means, what it represents. How do we differentiate it? How do we find the gradient function of this thing? because it doesn't seem like very easy because we haven't defined modulus function in terms of other functions that we know how to differentiate. But it's not a problem because there actually is another way to write the modulus function of x. We can use squaring and square rooting, right? If you square a number and then you take the square root of it, it doesn't change the value of the number. So we, can, but it always, but it makes it positive. So what we can do is we can say the modulus function of x is actually the exact same thing as, uh, x squared and then square rooted, right? Because if you square x, so if you had the number, let's say three, you square it, that gives you nine. You take the square root, it gives you three again. But if you take, let's say, negative three and you square that, that gives you positive nine. And then you take, you take the square root and it gives you positive three. So it's, it does the same thing as the modulus function, which is quite cool. It does the exact same thing. It gives you the same graph. It's amazing. But how can we write a square root, right, as a power? A square root is the same thing as raising something to the power of one half, just like that. And it's one, one thing important is you need to, you can't write x to the half and then squared. Because if x is negative, you can't take x to the half. So it needs to be this way around. It needs to be x squared and then square rooted, not square rooted and then squared. Because you can't take the square root of, let's say, minus three. Um, it well, it wouldn't be nice if you were to do that. So we actually just say we're going to leave it like this. Uh, so x squared and then to the power of a half. Okay, brilliant. So that's nice because now we can differentiate x squared to the power of a half. You might be tempted to just combine those powers and say, oh, the two and the one half, they times together, they cancel out. But do not do that because it will just give you x and it's not the same graph. So we can differentiate. If we say that y is equal to um, x squared and then square rooted, x squared to the power of a half. We can then make a substitution. This is a u substitution. Uh, this is the chain rule from differentiation, if you're familiar with that. So we can then say, let's, and I'm going to invent some variable u, equal x to the power of one half. Brilliant. If I do that, I can then say that y is actually, uh, because x squared and u are the same thing, I can say that y is equal to, instead of x squared, u and it's still being raised to the power of a half, right? So do you see how these two things uh, are the same? 
right? All we did was we changed the x squared with a u um, and we basically just uh, put the one half back on top there. Brilliant. So here I'm going to say, well, I actually need to know, because we're trying to find dy dx, I would like to know what du dx is. So if we just look at this guy, u equals x squared, if we differentiate um, u with respect to x, we get 2x, right? The derivative of x squared is 2x. Likewise, if we now take this guy here um, and we differentiate y with respect to u, and you'll see why we're doing this in a second, this is the same thing. So you just you know use the power rule of differentiation. You get the one half comes down, u, and then you take one off the power. So one half minus one gives you minus one half. Now, why are we doing this? If you're not familiar with the chain rule, well, dy dx is the same thing just by using like fraction multiplication as du dx times dy du, isn't it? It must be. And you know, why is that true? Well, if you take a look at what this thing on the right is saying, du dx dy du, those du's, they cancel out and they leave you with dy dx. And so what we can then say is that the derivative of our modulus function is simply equal to the product of the derivatives of dy du and uh, du dx. So dy du times du dx, that's our derivative, is equal to one half u to the minus one half, because that's the dy du bit, multiplied by our du dx, which was 2x times 2x. Brilliant. Um, and we'll just cancel out that one half and that two. So that's equal to, uh, and I'll move the x around the front, we get x times u to the minus one half, and that's in brackets like that. Um, but also, we don't want u in this problem anymore. Why don't we want u in this problem? Because it wasn't in the original one. So let's substitute back, instead of having a u, let's put our x squared back in. Because remember, x squared is the same thing as u. So we can say that dy du times du dx, which is equal to dy dx, because the du's cancel out, that must be equal to x times u, but what was u? u was x squared, and that's still being raised to the power of minus a half because it's also being raised to the power of minus a half right there. And now we just need to clean this up. So this is equal to x multiplied by, and instead of writing x squared to the power of minus a half, I'm going to write that as one over x squared to the power of positive one half. Because when you have a, a minus in the uh, power, that just means to take the reciprocal. So we do have uh, this right here. But guys, this is where it all comes together and it's really nice. What did we originally say that x squared to the power of a half was? What did we say that was? Well, we realized that that's the same thing as the modulus function of x, didn't we? We saw that, I'll scroll back up for you guys. We actually observed that very near the beginning, uh, right here. On this step here, we said, well, x to the x squared to the half is the modulus function of x. They're the same thing. So why don't we put it back? We've got an x squared to the half in our answer. So if we use this fact here, we use this as a fact, we can come over here and we've got our x times one over x squared to the half. We can write that as x times one over the modulus function of x, just like that. And then we can combine that all into one fraction and it's x over the modulus function of x, just like that. And that's our derivative. So we can then say that dy dx must be equal to x over the modulus function of x. And that is actually equal to the derivative of the modulus function of x. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.